Let's talk a little bit about the Haitian uh, community. What, what kind of uh, relation your office has with uh, some Haitian non-profit organization? What do you do, especially you know, after the earthquake? Uh, are you involved in you know, program activities you know, to help Haiti? Yes, well, even before the earthquake occurred, uh -huh. uh, we for many years uh, have served uh, a certain category of um, people uh, who come to the U.S. or who come to Massachusetts oh. with a certain protected status, and those are, they are called Cuban-Haitian entrants. Uh, and we have uh, programs and assistance available for these kinds of individuals that are like the kinds of benefits that are given to refugees. They're federally funded um, to help people get uh, resettled here uh, in the Commonwealth. Um, immediately after the earthquake occurred in January, uh, the governor, Governor Patrick, wanted to make sure that we had both a swift and comprehensive response um, because of the recognition of how large and important our Haitian population is here in Massachusetts, especially in eastern Massachusetts and especially in southeastern Massachusetts. Oh. Um, so he uh, asked me and uh, my agency to be sort of the, the, the lead agency on our response efforts. And, and uh, I, I remember, you know, you were at the first meeting at AFI and also the huge community meeting we have, you know, at the church, right. uh, Cathedral Holy Cross. That's right. You know, That's in, right. in Boston. It was a very moving ceremony yeah. that night, I have to say. Um, but it really, I think, demonstrated the uniqueness of the relationship between Greater Boston and Massachusetts mm -hmm. with our neighbors from Haiti, um, both those who are there and those who are here. Um, so we worked very closely with a number of uh, uh, emergency response organizations mm -hmm. like the Massachusetts Emergency Man uh, Management Agency, mm -hmm. the Red Cross, um, um, uh, the Executive Office of Public Safety. Uh, we worked very quickly to develop an inventory of uh, supplies and equipment and personnel that we knew could be made available to send down to Haiti to help with the recovery efforts. Uh, we made that inventory available to uh, our partners at the federal government, both at FEMA, the State Department, mm -hmm. Um, uh, uh, remaining ready if we ever were needed to be called down to help with the rebuilding in Haiti. And that remains the case to this day. Uh, but we also had to develop plans for how we were going to better um, uh, serve those people here, mm -hmm. Haitians here, who were deeply affected either by the loss of loved ones, by the loss of, of their own properties. Um, uh, we immediately uh, mobilized some additional counseling resources for people uh, throughout the Commonwealth because we uh, and we reached out to uh, organizations and uh, communities. We had um, uh, sort of briefings. Uh, we had sort of town hall type meetings everywhere from uh, Brockton, Somerville, mm -hmm. Cambridge, Everett, Malden, Boston, Worcester, uh, uh, working with local leadership, uh, letting them know that these resources were available. The Department of Public Health at the state. Yeah, I provide, you know, uh, a grant you know, for mental, small, mental health. Right, yeah. They were small, but they were mm -hmm. important at the time. Grants to uh, health centers and community-based organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, I made it a priority at the very beginning to uh, make sure that we were in constant communication with Haitian clergy, um, uh, making sure that they had the kind of information that mm -hmm. they needed to pass along to their congregations. We did uh, weekly conference calls with Haitian clergy to give them updates so that they would have that information for their services that weekend. Um, and uh, it has just been a, uh, uh, a tremendous response that we've seen, um, not just within the Haitian community yeah, and not yeah. just within state government, but really I would say the broader community um, in greater Boston and Massachusetts uh, in support of our Haitian brothers and sisters who, uh, who have suffered so much. Uh, We've also more recently have been working with the, the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services mm -hmm. Office, which is the, uh, you know, the, the arm of the federal government which handles the processing of citizenship and, and, and visa applications. You know, for, for the TPS. That's right. Mm -hmm. Working with them um, with uh, temporary protected status mm -hmm. and, and making sure we had um, uh, clinics that were going to be available to people throughout the communities. Uh, more recently, we have been working with USCIS on the issue of deferred action for those um, uh, Haitians who have been coming into the U.S. on B-2 visas uh, and want to try to find a way to stay. Um, so it, making sure that they understand what that means. Uh, and also understanding from the state side what these different new um, uh, immigration statuses mean in terms of eligibility mm -hmm. for services and benefits from the state side. So uh, even though the, the, the uh, immediate trauma 
uh, from the earthquake seems to have dissipated some, <laughs> the work continues. Um, and uh, we work very closely with a number of community organizations, Catholic charities, uh, especially in Boston and Brockton. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but others, uh, there's the, the there's still the task force that exists uh, in the greater Boston area, um, and uh, keeping them informed. Working with the Boston Foundation, which has that still has the uh, relief fund. Uh, so there have been. I'm, I'm happy to say there have been so many partners that have stepped forward uh, to help our uh, our Haitian communities here. But there still is a tremendous need that exists, uh, especially in increasing the capacity for those uh, Haitian serving community-based organizations. I know, uh, Richard, you are not here to talk, you know, ab <laughs> about, you know, politics. Whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> in Massachusetts. Uh, I know you were at, at Harvard on a fellowship when the first time, you know, you met with uh, the governor. Uh, why did you, you know, decide to join, you know, the campaign in 2006? Well, it's interesting you should bring up that, uh, <laughs> that year that I spent at Harvard. It was a delicious year uh, mm -hmm. on the Newman Fellowship, and it mm -hmm. was really just a year where I was allowed to explore certain kinds of intellectual journeys mm -hmm. that I had uh, always wanted to do. Um, and I actually ended up spending, I was supposed to go in and, and take these courses at the Kennedy School and the law mm -hmm. school, and I had a very s serious sounding proposal, but when I arrived, I ended up doing something very different. I, I ended up taking most of my courses in music, uh, <laughs> in poetry, in art um, and even in theater because I just found myself being drawn back to the creative experience. It's not, you know, do, those kind of, you know, mid, you know, career crisis. <laughs> <laughs> but it really sort of reminded me of my first love, which was always mm -hmm. been uh, how to think and how to express creatively, uh, how to think problems through creatively, mm -hmm. because it really affects a lot of the other decisions that I mm -hmm. am able to tackle and deal with. And it was really during that year that I first started thinking about the road ahead for me professionally. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure if I was going to always remain a foreign affairs editor. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't sure if I was always going to remain at the Boston Globe. And I wasn't sure that I was always going to remain in journalism. I didn't come up with the answers during that year, but it was really when I first started thinking about those questions um, and asking myself those questions. Um, I went back to the Globe for a year after, uh, after my fellowship mm -hmm. was over. Uh, and I was appointed the ombudsman, which uh, is a very unique opportunity uh, yeah. where I am essentially the, the reader's representative inside of the newspaper. Mm -hmm. My job is to explain to the readers why the newspaper does certain things the way it does and to critique the newspaper when the need arises. Um, and so uh, uh, it was during, after about a year in that role mm -hmm. that I was introduced to, uh, to DePaul Patrick. Um, and as I said, it was, did not take very long uh, for me to be um, motivated mm -hmm. uh, by his message, mm -hmm. by his story, mm -hmm. and by his vision of what he saw for, uh, for state government and for public service. And uh, uh, it was not an easy decision to, mm -hmm. to leave the Globe. Um, the Globe was a wonderful institution. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it, was, it was the time. It was the time to make that turn. Um, and I'm, I don't regret it. Uh, this has um, uh, opened me up to a whole new universe of people, of uh, issues, of, of even just of, of, of getting to